My name is Dr. Carola Arndt, and I'm a pediatric hematologist oncologist at Mayo Clinic. Today we're going to discuss neutropenia. Neutropenia is a condition that is characterized by low neutrophils, and neutrophils are the types of white blood cells that help fight bacterial infection specifically. Patients with neutropenia generally present with a history of ongoing recurrent infections. Uh, these infections could be bacterial infections such as pneumonia, boils, abscesses. They could be also infections characterized by chronic gingivitis or inflamed infected gums. The most common cause for neutropenia is following a viral infection. Those patients generally have totally benign neutropenia and they don't present with recurrent infections. And the neutropenia is generally discovered in the course of drawing a blood count because the child is seen by a medical provider who feels the child needs a blood count and obtains a CBC which shows neutropenia. If there's a clear history of a viral infection, most commonly post-viral neutropenia resolves within two to three weeks. And usually just repeating a CBC in two to three, sometimes four weeks, will show that the neutropenia is resolved. And most of the time, those patients do not have a history of chronic frequent infections. Sometimes neutropenia can be caused by drugs. In particular, certain kinds of antibiotics can cause neutropenia and stopping the antibiotic will result in resolution of the neutropenia. Other drugs other than antibiotics can also cause neutropenia. There is a condition called cyclic neutropenia, which is extremely rare. Cyclic neutropenia is characterized by neutrophil counts, that is, again, those white blood cells that help fight bacterial infection. The blood counts tend to cycle in approximately a 21-day phase, which pretty much correlates with the patient becoming ill. Now, in terms of a typical cyclic pattern, that's usually seen in older patients with cyclic neutropenia. Toddlers tend to not cycle that well, uh, or that typically, as older patients do. The way to diagnose or confirm the diagnosis of cyclic neutropenia is actually to do complete blood counts looking specifically at the neutrophil counts two to three times a week for six weeks. In addition to that, you want to make sure that the neutrophil count in patients with cyclic neutropenia corresponds with their time of illness because, again, the typical history of a child with cyclic neutropenia is they'll be ill at the same time that their neutrophil count will be low and that tends to be on about a three-week phase. Another kind of neutropenia which I see not infrequently is something called autoimmune neutropenia. In autoimmune neutropenia the body actually makes antibodies against the neutrophils and it's for that reason that the neutrophils are low and patients like this can present with, again, ongoing infections. Most commonly in patients with chronic or long-standing neutropenia, one of the most common things I hear is that these patients will bleed from their gums. And when I examine a patient with chronic neutropenia, I see chronic gingivitis or inflammation of the gums. Once their neutropenia is corrected, the inflammation of the gums will tend to resolve as long as good oral hygiene and frequent brushing of the teeth twice a day is maintained, just like in anybody with normal neutrophils. What's been a real plus in managing patients with chronic neutropenia, and I'm not talking now about patients who have brief neutropenia following a viral infection, and I'm not talking about patients who have neutropenia related to drugs, I'm talking about patients who have chronic neutropenia either on the basis of autoimmune neutropenia or idiopathic, meaning we don't know what causes the neutropenia. What's been very helpful is the use of something called GCSF or Neupogen. GCSF stands for granulocyte 
colony stimulating factor. And GCSF actually stimulates the bone marrow to produce neutrophils to get the neutrophil count back to more of a normal number. There's actually an international chronic neutropenia registry, and there is a website under chronic neutropenia registry, which can be found on the internet. And for patients who qualify for the registry and are accepted into the registry, the registry provides free neutropenia to help patients with their neutropenia, and the neutropenia, when administered on a regular basis, can help treat this neutropenia and many patients that I have with autoimmune neutropenia who are on tiny, tiny doses of GCSF have actually gone from being chronically ill patients to patients who are totally normal and healthy with the tiniest dose of GCSF or neutropenia. However, obviously a patient with chronic neutropenia needs to be evaluated to determine if there are other reasons besides a viral infection, a drug, an autoimmune condition. Uh, there could be an immune problem that's causing the neutropenia or something else. You also want to make sure that it's only the neutrophils, it's only the white blood cells that are affected and not other cell lines such as the red cells or the platelets. And again, today we only were discussing neutropenia alone.